We have fresh new details on iOS 18, along with Apple's brand new AI system. There's even more new features and changes found in the latest iOS 17.5 betas. We have some insight into the future of the Mac, and yes, of course, it includes AI. We have a crazy AirTag story and much more, all in today's episode of Apple Weekly. And if you want to stay out of the loop on Apple News, just stay unsubscribed. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button down below so you know about the latest Apple News before any of your friends. Okay, so let's talk about Ferret UI. This is Apple's latest AI advancement, and this comes from a research paper that was just recently released and published by Apple, and this is called Ferret UI. This is a new multimodal large language model, or MLLM, and keep in mind, an MLLM is different from an LLM because it goes beyond text. An LLM, which is what you know ChatGPT runs off of, is only able to understand text, or mostly able to understand just text, but an MLLM goes beyond on that and can understand, you know, multimodal elements such as images, video, and even audio. So Ferret UI is trained to recognize the different elements of a user's home screen, such as app icons and small text. And in this research paper, Apple says that they compared Ferret UI to GPT-4V, which is OpenAI's MLLM, in public benchmarks, and it, quote, excels not only beyond most open source UI MLLMs, but also surpasses GPT-4V on all of the elementary UI tasks. And they show a couple of examples of the Ferret UI model in action. And it shows kind of, you know, reminders right here. It shows everything that the model can read and understand without the need of any type of text input or voice input. It's just reading the tasks from the screen. And you can see the description of everything here. Now, they do say that specifically Ferret UI is able to not only discuss visual elements and detailed description and perception conversation, but also propose goal-oriented actions in interaction conversation and deduce the overall function of the screen via function interface. And of course, this is a research paper, so it's going to be very specific and very sophisticated in terms of the language used. And a lot of this stuff goes over my head even, but basically Apple doesn't really specify exactly how this is going to be used. Like we know how Ferret UI works now. We have, you know, a research paper here showing how Ferret UI is going going to be implemented into iOS, but we don't know the specifics just yet. These research papers are always somewhat vague for good reason because it's before the feature actually comes to the iPhone. But nonetheless, this is very exciting to see because this is different from every previous Apple research paper we've seen because every previous research paper has been based on an LLM where it's just text-based. It can read text and things like that. But since this is a multimodal LLM, that means that it's going to be able to understand things just based on the screen that you're currently on. And that opens up a world of possibilities on the iPhone. So hopefully we see that with iOS 18, but it's not, you know, said if that's going to be coming in iOS 18 or a future version of iOS. However, we did just recently get details on something that is coming in iOS 18 based on the code that has been, you know, floating around out there. So it looks like iOS 18 might add a new AI powered browsing assistant for Safari. And then also something found in the code was encrypted visual search. So this is a feature that could potentially be an upgraded version of the existing visual lookup feature where you can search for like cat and it shows you cats. But of course, this could be a lot more advanced now that Apple is really focusing on AI and implementing a lot of these MLLMs and LLMs into their software. So it'll be interesting to see what we get in June. Okay, so now I wanna talk about game emulators and why you might actually be able to download those in the App Store sooner than you think. So if you guys remember back in the day, game emulators were like one of the top reasons to jailbreak your iPhone or download a third-party App Store. But soon, you're not gonna need to do that because the EU just, you know, basically forced Apple into allowing these game emulators on the App Store globally. However, Apple does warn that the developers are responsible for the software offered in the emulator application. So that means that you're not gonna be able to have any pirated games or ROMs or anything like that. That, it seems. So this could be limited unless the actual publisher or developer like Nintendo releases their own emulator for like, you know, the Pokemon and, and the Game Boy, which would be awesome. But I don't know, this, this is good news. But it's also, you know, we have to kind of see how this plays out if you can't have ROMs in the App Store. And the developer of the PSP open source emulator said this, since we don't own the rights to PSP games, we can't offer them as in-app downloads. Users must still obtain the games on their own. So for 
PSP to be useful beyond running a small set of free homebrew games, it all depends on how Apple interprets their own rules. If it turns out that the rules now allow emulators with ISO slash ROM pickers, PSP will come to the App Store later this year. If not, well, it won't. So this is great news for game emulators potentially coming to the App Store, but like I said, this is still highly dependent on what Apple is going to actually allow inside of the emulators. And also Apple did announce that music streaming applications like Spotify are now able to include a link or a buy button that leads to an external website with information about alternative music purchasing options in the EU. That was one big thing that Spotify was fighting Apple over. So before we talk about the future of the Mac and some other important news, let's talk about iOS 17.5. I want to give an update on iOS 17.5, which is currently in its beta stages, but we just learned of a couple of other additional features coming to iOS 17.5. And the first one has to do with puzzles. So if you go into the news application and go to the following tab and then go to puzzles right here, there are some new changes here. So you can see right off that it's connected to Game Center now. So we have Game Center uh, tracking so you can track your stats in these different puzzles. There's a new share image, but most importantly, there's a brand new game up top. So you can see before it was just crossword and crossword mini, but now we have this one, which is quartiles. So this is a brand new game. That's actually really fun. I've played it and uh, you can see it's kind of like Wordle where every day there's a new puzzle and this is big for those you know that are into word games and we saw that the revenue for the New York Times has been crazy with these word games so Apple is trying to get in get a piece of that pie from the New York Times also I don't think I've ever mentioned this and I've never realized it myself but if you go to subscribe to an Apple service and you look down at the bottom it shows after adding this subscription your combined subscriptions will total to $40 a month so it'll show you the amount that you're actually paying on a month if you add this service to you know your apple id to your subscriptions which is really cool and that might be new i've never noticed that before now something else that's coming in ios 17.5 is a much bigger deal and this has to do with google who just introduced their find my device network for android devices which does exactly what apple's find my network does but with 17.5 what's changing is that the found moving with you alert that you get with air tags appears to be coming to third-party item trackers in light of Google's official launch of their Find My Device network. So now if somebody is trying to track you with a third party item tracker, such as a Eufy tracker, a Google tracker, a Chipolo, any other third party item tracker out there, you will now get an alert if an unknown third party AirTag is following you, thanks to this big you know, agreement and partnership with Apple and Google. Now this is not available on the betas, but this will be rolling out by the time the final release of iOS 17.5 comes out, which is great news. And as far as the performance goes on iOS 17.5 beta one performance has been fine. There's really been no change going from last week to this week. So we have been on a two week cycle going from beta one to beta two. So the performance here on beta one is still the same as it was last week. However, I did run a fresh Geekbench 6 CPU test, and you can see we scored a 2955 and a 7126. If you compare that to previous runs of 17.5 beta one, it is higher on both single core and multi-core, but it's about the same. It's actually a little bit lower than at the initial run of iOS 17.4, the final release. But nonetheless, pretty good numbers there for the Geekbench test on 17.5 beta one. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life has been fine for me. However, I have been seeing a lot of people report battery drain on 17.5 beta 1 and also 17.4.1 but for me personally you know and I have this running on my main device here my main 15 pro max I've had no issues with battery life no issues whatsoever I have had some heat issues but I think that's mainly related to just me using my phone too much and also having a case on it which is why I've been rocking it caseless for the past I don't know month or so uh, but I did have some heat issues early on this is before 17.5 beta 1 came out but battery life has been fine for me so far. We do still have the bug there where it shows charging title and short optimized. So that's annoying. We should see that fixed with beta two. But uh, yeah, the battery so far has been just fine for me. And then as far as what to expect next from Apple in terms of software, we should be seeing iOS 17.5 beta two next week on the week of April 15th. So I would expect to see that second beta release to developers on the 16th. 
So we should see that on Tuesday. And then after that, we should see 17.5 betas continue on a weekly basis. So we should be getting beta three on the week of the 22nd, most likely on the 23rd, all the way until the final release of iOS 17.5 at some point in early May, which is also when we're expecting to see the announcement or even the release date of the new iPad Pro and iPad Airs. I've also had a couple of people ask me if we're gonna see a 17.4.2 since we did get a Vision OS 1.1.2 earlier this week. And my response to that, my answer would be probably not. I don't think that we're gonna see anything until 17.5, the final release, but there is a possibility of that if Apple finds something critical in the code, you know, that's causing issues, or most importantly, and most likely is a security issue. So if a security issue comes to light, if it's being actively exploited, then of course, Apple is going to push out an update. But if they don't find any major bugs or security, you know, vulnerabilities that are being exploited out there, don't expect a 17.4.2, just expect a 17.5 as the next public release. Okay, so now let's talk about the not so distant future of the Mac. And this is related to the M4 chip, which which is on the way now, just months after the M3 chip was first released on the MacBook Pro. That was in November. But apparently, Apple is now nearing production of the M4 equipped machines, and Apple plans to equip every Mac in the lineup with this new M4 chip. And this report from Bloomberg says that M4 is going to be focused on AI processing capabilities. And there's gonna be at least three variants of the M4 chip. So think M4, M4 Pro, maybe M4 Max, M4 Ultra, something like that. And for the highest end desktop Mac, which is most likely the Mac Pro, Apple might increase the RAM ceiling from 192 gigabytes to 512 gigs of RAM. However, there is no word on increasing the base storage from 256 to 512 or increasing the base RAM from 8 to 16 gigabytes. I, I don't think that's happening even this year with M4. And German says Apple is aiming to release the updated computers beginning late this year and extending into early next year. There will be new iMacs, a low-end 14-inch MacBook Pro, high-end 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros, and Mac Minis, all with M4 chips but the company's plans could change, of course. And then he says, Apple is then planning to follow up with more M4 Macs throughout 2025. That includes updates to the 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Air by the spring, the Mac Studio around the middle of the year, and the Mac Pro later in 2025. So that's very exciting news. If you were in the market for a Mac or considering upgrading to a Mac around this time, it's just best to wait because if every single Mac is gonna be upgraded with M4, you might as well just wait at this point especially because these AI capabilities could be important for the future of the Mac. We don't really know what that entails at this point. I'm sure we're going to find out a lot more in June at the Worldwide Developers Conference. But to, to see AI, you know, combined with the new Macs and the new M4 chip, that's pretty exciting and has me excited to see what Apple can do, especially with big machines like the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. And then speaking of German and Bloomberg, we also got a new report this week about a new Apple TV that might have a built-in camera for FaceTime and other video calling applications. And this report says that this new Apple TV could support gesture-based controls and work seamlessly with both the iPhone and the Vision Pro. And he continues by saying that Apple has also considered a lightweight smart display that could be used around the house. Think a low-end iPad that could be, quote, shuttled from room to room as needed and hooked into charging hubs stationed around the house. And this is interesting to me because I'm assuming that not everybody has the Apple TV just, you know, in front of their TV, eye level, you know, and perfectly there. Now, I'm sure it would have center stage, so it may not need to be right there. But I know a lot of people that put their Apple TV inside of a cupboard or, you know, way down low where it's just out of, uh, you know, out of the space. So this would be interesting. You know, what do you think about a camera being built into a future Apple TV? Also this week, Apple announced that later this year, they're going to begin allowing used parts for repair. So they say in the fall, Apple calibration for both new and used genuine Apple parts will happen on device after the part is installed. So if you go into your settings, general about, it's going to say whether a new or used part was used on your iPhone. And what's interesting, 
interesting is that activation lock is going to be extended to iPhone parts as well, not just the iPhone itself. So this is going to deter thieves from stealing phones and disassembling them to sell. And then another week, another new iPhone 16 rumor. This one has to do with the colors of the iPhone. And I don't like putting a lot of stock into these early rumors about the iPhone 16, especially when it comes to colors. So take this with a grain of salt, but this did come from a Weibo post. And it says that the iPhone 16 could come in seven different color options. So we have pink, yellow, blue, green, black, white, and purple. So that is a lot of colors and it's hard to see Apple doing that. However, I would like to see Apple offer more colors than just the five options that we got for the previous iPhone, the iPhone 15 and 15 plus. And then finally, let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. And this one is very ironic because a trio of thieves in California were in a Target store when they decided that it was a good idea to steal a pack of Apple AirTags. They removed the security sensors and were able to make it out of the store without being caught, but it wasn't long until the police were able to find them by using the Find My application. So after they got caught and arrested, police found more stolen AirTags in the car, which were believed to be stolen from another retail heist in a neighboring city. All three of the men were arrested and charged with burglary, false information to an officer, and organized retail theft. Pro tip, if you're gonna steal something, make sure it doesn't have location tracking built in to the product. I mean, come on, that's just as dumb as it gets. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 18, the future of the Mac, iOS 17.5, and everything else. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Apple Weekly. If you did, let me know with a comment down below. Also give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to stay in the loop of everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and check out the Apple Den newsletter. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.